Okay, I have nine o'clock. We'll uh, call the May 21st uh, Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Please join me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll continue with the agenda review. Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda today. Move the agenda. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Start with the uh, child care forgivable loan request uh, from the city of Mapleton. You guys come right up here. Yeah. Come on up. A nice seat. <laughs> You're somebody. You're somebody. <laughs> come up here. You're somebody. <laughs> All right. Morning, Commissioners. Good morning. Good morning. My name is John Holrick. I'm the Mayor of Mapleton. Uh, with me is Patty Woodruff, the uh, uh, City Administrator of Mapleton. And we're here today uh, to talk about the Child Care Forgivable Loan Program and to request a $35,000 um, uh, grant or forgivable loan uh, from that fund. Uh, we've um, had a child care center that uh, closed in 2016 as a nonprofit daycare center in town. And the city, as well as uh, some city um, uh, leaders uh, and the school, have been working towards finding some way to reopen that um, building. And we've gone through a couple uh, instances where we've talked with some private individuals on getting that uh, center reopened. Uh, both of those have fallen through. And so at this point, um, the, the school is, is very interested in helping us run the day-to-day the -day management of it with the employees, uh, utilizing their employees. They run a, um, what they call Eagle Care, um, which is a, um, you know, basically age preschool for through, you know, up to kindergarten. Uh, they currently run that uh, before and during and after day uh, school program. Um, and so, so they would kind of put this into that uh, with their um, infants and toddlers we would have it at this center which is just a block away from the school. Um, so we're really excited with that. Um, the uh, previous nonprofit that was running it um, consistently had some issues with you know having a director and, and, and getting utilizing the, the labor force. Um, so we're really excited that the school is behind us on this and um, willing to open this because they recognize that <coughs> for us, for the city of Mapleton, having childcare in our city is a big driver to bringing people to live in our city. Mm -hmm. And um, we just, we're missing that center. We, we've got, um, uh, you know, just three or four home-based daycares in town right now and they are completely full. They are have waiting lists and um, so we are, um, study have shown that we're o over a hundred spots short in our area and this daycare center isn't going to be that many it's 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 going to bring in um uh, somewhere in the i think about 28 infants and toddlers and uh so it's it's not going to fill the gap completely but it's going to help sure um so we're we've got uh um, tonight at our at our city council meeting um we're bringing forward a plan that would um th where the the city of mapleton would would also um, be providing and the EDA be providing some annual funding to fill the gap uh, with a p possible projected cash cash flow mm -hmm. deficit every year um, and so we're, we're bringing that forward to if, if there is a deficit that the city of Mapleton is going to um, help help fund this for a few years too along with this uh, forgivable loan that will be utilized for operating costs to, to start it back up and, and get it running. Very good. That's awesome. I'll move approval. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Uh, just a comment, Mr. Chair. If anybody can pull this off, it's Mapleton. It seems like Mapleton <laughs> steps up to the plate when you have something that's not working in your city. You know, you did the restaurant. You were just ready to take that over. Someone came in and took it over for you. Yep. You still run the, the liquor store, correct? We do, yes. Um, and then I think by teaming up with the, the school is just a, a great idea to get that infrastructure. They have the, the hiring process in place. They have the background checks, all that stuff that yep. makes a small business very difficult to run right. in place already. So uh, yeah. I think that's a great idea. So great. congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Yes, excellent. Thank you for doing that. Thank you. A great program. Yep. So, any when other I, thoughts? Mr. Chair, when I was at USDA, um, we saw the importance of um, daycare and economic development. Um, because if people can 
stay in your community, have a, a daycare facility, um, it builds jobs and makes it easier for people to go to work and not have to worry. And the schools are going to make a huge difference, I think. When you think of that connection, yes. it's perfect. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> it's carried. Thank Good luck. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> okay, at this point we will uh, recess the board meeting and uh, begin the EDA meeting. Do we have anyone present from the EDA? Oh, there we are. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair and members of the EDA. Uh, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. uh, we'll start with the agenda review. <coughs> uh, Mr. Chair, there are no changes to the agenda. Okay. I'll move the agenda. And I'll second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The minutes? I'll move the minutes. Second. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Minutes are approved. Okay, now the resolution to support for tax credit application. Mr. Chair and members of the EDA, um, the first item before you is a proposal from the Southwest Minnesota Housing Partnership, um, which is a nonprofit organization that supports um, housing and other needs in various communities in southern Minnesota. Um, they're proposing an 80 unit workforce housing project at 221 Lamb Street in Mankato. Um, this includes 30 supportive housing units and, and 10,000 square feet of childcare um, for which they are negotiating that to be affordable childcare. Um, there is a significant need um, in Mankato and all of Blue Earth County for affordable housing and particularly for supportive housing um, as well as for um, childcare. They are seeking um, low-income housing tax credits from Minnesota Housing. These are very, very competitive. And one component um, that can provide a lot of assistance to their projects are local contributions. So they are requesting a $50,000, 0% deferred loan um, from the Blue Earth County EDA that would not only help um, financially toward the project, but also help to um, gain additional points for local contribution. At this point, I can take any questions that you might have. Okay. Any questions? So, <clears throat> they're asking for a $50,000 loan from the EDA. That is correct. Okay. Does that come directly from the City of Mankato and Blue Earth County, or how does that... So the, fun, the funds would come from the Blue Earth County EDA accounts. So they are managed by the city of Mankato, but it, they are solely held by Blue Earth County um, in the sense of the, the funds belong to Blue Earth County um, and do require approval by the Blue Earth County EDA. They would be coming from a reserve account um, that, that has been built up. Um, there's currently more than a million dollars in the reserve account. Um, the city of Mankato is also contributing toward the project um, $100,000 as well as um, 15 project-based vouchers and they will be um, considering and have preliminarily approved tax increment financing as well. Okay. I would move to approve. I a second. Okay. Any further discussion? Is it? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. <coughs> okay. We'll move on to the Bridges rental assistance program grant okay for bridges um, we went through a renewal process with the state of minnesota and um, they did approve us for the same funding as last year the um, so we have 14 vouchers that we would be subsidizing on a two-year basis uh, the, the difference in this year's renewal process was we did it in a regional approach so um, rice county also received bridges funding and they had 10 vouchers that were also renewed so they're kind of combined with us so we have 24 <coughs> for our region um, those two counties have traditionally been using those funds we really wanted to expand into the other parts of the region they didn't have enough funding to um, fill the whole region um, but we have started the basis for in the future to expand into those other areas so we'll still 
create the regional approach to w work with the different agencies, um, with people with mental health issues, to try to get them housed, um, but we'll use other mechanisms until the Bridges program can provide additional funding. So this here, we're just asking for a resolution to um, approve the funding award of $253,232 for 24 vouchers for over the next two years, and it also um, provides signature authority with um, Bob Meyer and myself. I'll move approval. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Just have how many people would that vouchers? How many would that help? Um, we will have 24 vouchers, mm -hmm. um, which is the same as we've had in the past, so it hasn't expanded. Um, but even within that 24, it could, it will serve um, probably even twice as many people over that period yeah. of time because people will transition through to Section mm -hmm. 8. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Mr. Chair, it's a really good program. I'm yep. really glad that there's some money there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming up. Okay. I believe that's the end of our business. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Aye. All in favor say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Uh, we'll call the uh, Lewis County Board of Commissioners meeting back to order and we'll continue with planning and zoning. Morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> Okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. PC 09 19 is a request from Matt Hallrick for review and <coughs> approval of a conditional use permit to construct and operate one new total confinement swine finishing facility capable of housing 2,400 finishing pigs or 960 Blue Earth County defined animal units, which is 720 state animal units. The proposal will utilize a blow barn concrete liquid manure storage area. The site is zoned agricultural and is located in part of the southeast quarter of the southeast quarter of Section 5, Lyra Township. Mr. Dolphin presented the staff report. The applicant was present and had no additional comments. There was, there was no public comment. Potential runoff impacts of the nearby bluff <coughs> was discussed. Staff indicated that an on-site meeting had taken place and runoff was discussed. Conditions to address the runoff potential will be included with the construction permit. Following the discussion, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to forward to the County Board a recommendation of approval based on the findings prepared by staff. And the Board action is the resolution. Okay. Very good. Thank you. <coughs> I'll, uh, at this time, I'll open the public portion uh, for PC09-19. Anyone wanting to testify, please come to the podium and uh, state your name and address. Uh, please keep your comments to three minutes or less. Is there anyone that would like to testify? Anyone that would like to testify to zero, PC09-19? If not, I'll close the public portion of the meeting, bring it back to the board for action. I move approval. Is there a second? Any discussion? There's no discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Motion is carried. Okay. PC 10-19 is a request from David Peterson for review and approval of a conditional use permit to construct and operate one new total confinement swine nursery facility capable of housing 4,000 pigs under 55 pounds or 200 animal units. The proposal will utilize a below barn concrete liquid manure storage area. The site is zoned agricultural and is located in part of the southeast quarter of the northeast quarter of Section 16, Ceresco Township. <coughs> Mr. Rolfing presented the staff report. The applicants were present and had no additional comment. There was no public comment and little discussion by the Planning Commission. Following the discussion, the Planning <coughs> Commission voted unanimously to forward to the County Board a recommendation of approval based on the findings prepared by staff. The Board action is a resolution. <coughs> okay, we'll open the public portion of this and uh, uh, anyone wishing to testify to PC 10-19. Please come to the podium, state your name and address, keep your comments to three minutes or less. <clears throat> Is there anyone wishing to testify to PC 10-19, please come to the podium. Anyone wishing to testify to PC 10-19, please come to the podium. Okay, if not, I'll bring it back to the board for action. I'll move approval. 
Okay. Second, Any discussion? There's no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Motion is carried. PC 11-19 is a request from David and Carol Stringy. It is a request for review and approval of a conditional use permit to transfer a residential development right. Both quarter quarters are zoned agricultural and have areas within the Shoreland Overlay District of Morgan Creek, a DNR classified tributary stream. This request will send the residential development right from the northwest quarter of the northwest quarter of Section 28, Cambria Township, to the northeast quarter of the northwest quarter of Section 28, Count Cambria Township. Ms. Hagen presented the report. The applicants were present and had no additional comment. There was no public comment and little discussion by the Planning Commission. Following the discussion, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to forward to the County Board a recommendation of approval based on the findings prepared by staff and the Board action is a resolution. Okay. I'll open the public portion of this meeting. Anyone wishing to speak to PC 11-19, please come to the podium. Anyone wishing to speak to PC 11-19, please come to the podium. Is there anyone that would like to speak to PC 11-19, please come to the podium. If not, I'll close the public portion of the meeting, bring it back to the board for action. Second. Okay. Any discussion? If none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. <coughs> PC 12-19 is a request from Mark and Arlene Herzberg and Dave and Patsy Pongratz. It is a request for review and approval of an application to transfer the residential development right from the northeast quarter of the northwest quarter of section 19, Jamestown Township, to the southwest quarter of the northwest quarter of section 19, Jamestown Township. The property is zoned agricultural and contains areas within the shoreland overlay districts of Whiter Lake and Lake George. Mr. Leary presented the staff report. The applicants were present and had no additional comment. There was no public comment and little discussion by the Planning Commission. Following the discussion, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to forward to the County Board a recommendation of approval based on the findings prepared by staff and the Board action is a resolution. Okay, I'll open the public portion of the meeting for PC 12-19. Anyone wishing to testify, please come to the podium. Anyone wishing to testify to PC 12-19, please come to the podium. <clears throat> Anyone wishing, wishing to testify to PC 12-19, please come to the podium. If there's no public comment, I'll close the public comment portion and bring it back to the board. I'll move um, approval. Second. Okay. Um, I, I will say that I'm abstaining from voting. The Pungratzes are family members. so. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other discussion? I just want one thing to mention that this, these, are the, the, I, these two items are something that the staff and I have been working on to try to get done at the staff mm -hmm. level, because this is a pretty routine procedure, and so we'll probably see in that shortly. We've been getting a few of these, and there are a lot of paperwork and the yeah. CUPs, uh, and, it, and it is just, it's, it's a written policy that works pretty well, and I'm, I'm confident the staff can handle it at that level. So in the future, you'll see some discussion about yep. that, okay. trying to handle it that way. So. Excellent. Any other comments? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's carried. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. PC 02-19 is a request from Leo and Sandra Koppelman and Park Avenue Solar Solutions for request and review of an amendment to a previously approved conditional use permit to operate a large solar energy system. The proposed project will span approximately six acres and will have a power capacity of up to one megawatt, which by Blue Earth County standards classifies it as a large energy system. The proposed amendments include changing the type of racking system from fixed tilt to tracking, changing the layout and configuration of the project, changing the interconnection point, relocating the service roads, and positioning the project approximately 115 feet further away from the center line of County State Aid 27. The property is zoned agricultural and is located in the southwest quarter of the southwest quarter of Section 5, Luray Township. Mr. Stubbs presented the staff report. The applicants were present and commented on the potential glare from the project, indicating the panels are tempered with an anti-reflective coating. Seven neighboring residents expressed the following concerns. One, the impact of glare on traffic and surrounding neighbors. Two, the use of utility poles versus an underground system. 
three, the time it will take to establish the dogwood screening areas, it was also requested that the vegetative screening requirement be added to the east side of the project. Four, industrial solar projects should not use prime agricultural land. Five, some residents will have solar projects on two sides. Six, the, sol the current solar site has impacted TV and radio reception. Seven, move the project to the north and provide better screening. Eight, the project rendition does not accurately reflect what is actually proposed. Nine, move the project to the south, southeast to, the, to a less destructive location. Ten, project should not be approved until a glare study is conducted. Eleven, neighbors will be forced to look at utility poles and a chain link fence. Twelve, the required $30,000 decommissioning bond is inadequate. The decommissioning bond should be the same as the construction cost. Thirteen, oil from the gearboxes of the rotating racking system has the potential to leak onto the ground, creating an environmental problem. One of the neighboring residents presented a list of conditions that he asked, to, or questions that he asked to be addressed by the applicants prior to the county board meeting. The dogwood screening was discussed. The applicants indicated they would start with a minimum height of 24 inches as specified in the previous CUP conditions of approval. The commission asked for clarification on the decommissioning plan to which staff provided a brief explanation. The commission discussed the possibility of moving the project to the south, the, com the conversion of cropland to solar, and the proximity of the project in relation to the substation. The commission expressed their empathy with the affected neighbors, but recognized that two versions of the project had been approved before and that it meets the requirements of the ordinance. Following the discussion, the Planning Commission voted unanimously to forward to the County Board a recommendation of approval. No reference was made to the conditions recommended by staff, and the Board action is the resolution. Okay. At this time, I'll open the public portion of this meeting. Anyone wishing to testify to PC 09-19, please come to the podium, state your name and address, and remind you to keep your comments to three minutes or less. I am uh, Mike Gensel. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Good morning, Mike. Uh, 60374 224th Lane, Mass and Lake. I am about a quarter mile to the north of this project and an eighth of a mile from the current solar system. Um, the the thought that you know one of their in the questions how they answered it that's re less reflective than water. If you can get water to stand on end like this, I want to see that happen. It that's going to be reflective. I don't care what you say. You turn it towards the road, it's still going to be reflective. By the time these dogwoods get grown up big enough to stop their reflection, it's going to be, I don't know how long they take to grow. I'm, I'm not an arborist, but i got to imagine years. I, I can't imagine they grow in, a, in six months or whatnot. It's going to affect the traffic out there. Also, Fast Sun has already tried to bring out a porta potty to set on the side of the gravel road out there, impeding traffic. They stopped in at, at uh, my dad's place there asking where they can leave this thing. They have no, one of the conditions was they can't work on the side of the road or they can't set up there. They're already trying to set up there before the conditional use permit is in. The thought that they're gonna follow through with any of this stuff after an action like that seems absurd. Um, and as for the screening, I would think you'd have to put something on that fence to to block it at least you know some of that green slatting something like that yes that's ugly too I think but at least it would stop the glare that's about all I got I, I just I'm really really against this whole thing I, I'm for solar I'm against the way they're doing it and the fact that Koppelman himself doesn't show up today to his own hearing in my opinion, speaks volumes. If he's so for this and thinks he's in the right, I would think he'd be here to defend himself. Instead, he sent someone from the Twin Cities that isn't going to give a hoot about us as soon as she gets her paycheck. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Okay, is there anyone else wishing to testify to PC 02-19? Yeah, my name is, good morning. Good my morning. name is John Benzie. 
and I live 2220 604 Avenue, Eagle Lake. Um, if I may, I'd like to bring a couple pictures up to you. Sure. To pass around. This is to prove that there is no glare from those solar panels. As this lady told us at the commissioner's meeting, there wasn't. Now, I also, this is what I see when I drive into my north driveway. Granted, it's not 24 hours, but it's there. And that, to me, is a lie when they say it's not. There. You want to look? Go ahead, take a good look. You have been there, you don't have to look at it. I got, I got 38 acres of solar panels directly behind my house. I got 16 big ugly poles, and you can see in that one small picture, and by, by the way, that's just a cheap camera. Can you imagine if it was a good camera, the glare you'd get? That doesn't exist, of course. I just can't believe how people can lie. Anyway, I got those six, 16 big ugly poles with wires hanging down, and then when we had the storm earlier this year, I've lived out there for 40 years. And when we had the storm, we lost power for over four hours. And the power companies out there with their big bucket, and guess where they were working? Right where those, all those solar wires are attached to the power cords that go along the road. So it's just not a perfect system yet. I'm not opposed to solar, I'm opposed to this organization. This is a third different group that's been hired by the Koppelmans to build this crazy outfit. I, I got the solar behind me, beside me, and now they're going to put it across the road. I feel that I'm going to be living in an electrical cocoon out there, and I just don't feel that's healthy for my family. I went on the internet, and you wouldn't believe how many people have animals that are dying from electrical, uh, you know, stray electricity coming off the power cords and stuff. It's just not right for us human beings to have to put up with this crap. I asked at the commissioner's meeting if they could do a study, and here's the, here's the reply, the county, county and or the applicants is unable to answer this question. I mean, why do we pay taxes? Why do we vote for uh, commissioners and congressmen and senators to represent us? They're not. I feel that they're letting us down. I just, I'm blown away. I love government. I love the country. I love Minnesota. I moved here from California 40 years ago because I wanted to get away from all the hackle, all the crap that's, you know, and now they're moving it in around me. I, I'm just, I'm so disappointed in this state and this system right now. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else wishing to? Cut him off. Inappropriate. Anyone else wishing to speak to PC02-19? <laughs> It's Commissioner Landhammer, right? That's correct. I just want to make sure you weren't here for the last time we went no. to this. No, so. <laughs> I'm new. Yeah. Morning, I'm Bob. Bob Grosskreitz. I live 22298604 Avenue Eagle Lake. It's directly west of this proposed site. Um, this will take a couple minutes, I guess. I'm just wondering how this could happen. I thought about it, and I'd like to tell you. It happened like this. From the beginning, poor notification, poor representation, and then it was approved. First in a place where it could be built in the first place, and then moved to the worst place possible after that, just some 200 feet out my front window, and Jack's as well. All recommended along the way by the staff, the zoning commission, and the commissioners. Our representation consisted of this. Residents to the north, residents to the south, cropland to the east, two residents to the west and an existing solar farm. From staff to zoning, the commissioners had no visual idea. Words were blind. Now the county runs with kind of with its tail between its legs because it's caught in a legal thing. They can't back out of what's been done. It was just words on a wall. They say well, there will not be glare. I think Jack's pictures speak for itself. It brings to me mind of the Profinium building downtown. 
people swerving from their own headlight reflection and running into the traffic lane and cars next to them, and even hitting the building itself. This too is special low glare treated glass. It's just to tell you what you want to hear. It's been a lie. The next lie was the tile installation. Pre-approved before any of this was to be approved and for it to be hooked up to the county dra new county, county drain tile. And then they used it as leverage to build in the present location. The only thing they're hooking to is the low point of the bottom ditch drain or the inspection hole, depending on what it is on the day you talk to somebody. At extra cost? I think not. <clears throat> There's one on every side of the road wherever they cross the road. That's just what it is. It's the lower drain. It didn't cost anything extra to put it there. I'd like to say Leo was here, but again, as Mike said, he's not here to re represent himself. So when I say Leo, I'd be referring to his representation today. I told him about a year ago that there's a couple better options to build in less intrusive places. Land he already owned. The, the developers and Leo chose neither. You and your developers only changed anything when you were forced to, all the while saying you do what's best for all involved. It was just another lie. Six tries for approval. We question whether you, <clears throat> how you could pick such unreliable people, especially when I've been told by you guys that you have some 250 or 350 of these previous installs. This conditional permit will be different, not so much to build to the county code, but to me, it is a contract with my neighborhood. Every I will be dotted, every T will be crossed, and I promise you, the phone will ring. Not to them, but I will get personal representation from my neighborhood, from the county or the developers, or Leo, or whatever it takes. Because these people didn't want to work with us unless we were forced to. Now we don't trust them. Okay, we're just a little over three minutes already. Please uh, wrap up your comments. Okay. Going back to, I'd like to bring note of these questions that were, I think we should have some more discussion on these with us as a unit. Um, number one and two, that's just what they say. Um, the phone numbers are number three. I think we deserve that before this moves forward. Number four, it, it's kind of a cop out. We really didn't get any answers. Number five, uh, the plan for the glare, they could step forward as long as we're putting trees on the east side. Uh, why don't they put the west tree shrubs and bring in full size trees on the west right away to start with? I think your problem would be solved. They can keep them trimmed at six, eight <coughs> feet, whatever it takes. I think it would be a sensible move. Might cost, might cost them a little bit now, but might save them a little more money in the long run. Um, I, I sure got some more things I'd like to mention, but since yeah. I've run out of time, so yeah. be it. I'd like Commissioner Lancammer to come out, as the rest of you folks have done last summer, and put our feet on the ground to really see what we're looking at. I think that's the least that we could request, that she's on the same page with the rest of us. I know you've seen this picture before, but she hasn't. This is what Jack will be looking at out his front window. This is what I'll be looking at. Here again, this is what we already look at in our backyard. I'd really like you to come up with I drove by. You have? Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, thank you for your comments. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else that would like to speak to PC02-19? Uh, uh, my name is Daryl Gensel, uh, 604, 604, 220, 604th Avenue. I'd only like to say that as a landowner, right directly in that area, um, and talking to all, or not all, but different landowners in that area, we've all had these proposals where, hey, you're going to get rich putting solar on your farm. We're going to, you know, we're look at the money you're going to make. Everybody in our area that is respecting our prime farmland has denied this, except a, a, a landowner perhaps that is 20 miles away, doesn't have to look at this, and and of course the people that are wherever they're from that they're nowhere near this um, if this goes through which it probably will at least one big thing for me is those unsightly poles as I un understand they can I'm sure it's extra cost put this underground with their transformers and such we should not have to look at such 
ugliness in our area when we've got such a beautiful farm area as it is now. So that's kind of all I have to say. It's, uh, I think it's wrong to tie up such prime farmland, but I guess the ordinance is what it is and it can't be changed right now. So thank you. Thank you, thank you for your comments. <coughs> Okay, is there anyone else that would like to speak to PC 02-19? Hi, uh, my name is Paula Kalinuski and I'm Good here morning. representing Park Avenue Solar Solutions. They're the company that bought the site. Um, I work for Emmons and Oliver Resources and we're located in Oakdale, Minnesota. Um, so I'm just going to uh, quickly read a statement and maybe address some of the comments that were that were shared at the P uh, Planning Commission meeting a couple weeks ago. So Park Avenue Solar Solutions ne negotiated the purchase of Fast Sun, the Fast Sun 14 site uh, from Sunrise Energy Ventures in July of 2018. Sunrise Energy Ventures is a developer, a solar developer. They're not um, so much uh, an operator, whereas Park Avenue Solar Solutions is an operator. Um, so uh, at the time of the purchase, they were aware of the strict conditions that were included in the conditional use permit and understood that they would need to protect county infrastructure in their design. Um, the civil engineer, our team, we were proactive in this endeavor. We met with the county staff on site in October of 2018 to address their concerns about the uh, county drain tile setbacks and protection of county infrastructure. Um, that addressing those concerns did result in the need to have to redesign or realign the access road and relocate the utility connection. And there were also concerns about county road expansion in the future. So the, when those things were taken into account um, with the road realignment and uh, a um, reconfiguration of the geometry of the lease area. Um, the scope of those revisions ended up um, requiring a fourth CUP amendment. So um, it wasn't our desire to make a lot of changes to the site plan, but those were in response to protection of county infrastructure and uh, future plans for the county to expand the county road. Um, our team understands that the existing solar installation has resulted in negative impacts to the residents. Uh, while we cannot speak to the specifics of that project and the conditions that were put in place, we do note that there are numerous conditions that have been put in place for this project in response to that project. Um, our, the team that has been assembled to move this project forward from zoning to the implementation is comprised of reputable companies with solid track records, including REC Solar, who manage the project and are the solar installation uh, company, Emmons and Oliver Resources, my own company, we're the civil engineer and landscape architecture firm. We have uh, several awards and um, stand behind our, our plans. Um, uh, and Brad Alone Companies is the civil contractor on the site and they have done many, many projects around the state and you may be familiar with their name. All parties have previous experience with the solar site design and installation, and we've worked with local partners to address unique concerns on those sites. Uh, EOR is dedicated to, <coughs> to providing civil and landscape designs that minimize ecological impacts and provide community benefit. The vegetation and restoration plan that we have put in place addresses the DNR, DNR pollinator pledge. Excuse me, Hi, yeah. you're just, just a little over three minutes okay. now. So. Well, I will skip to a couple of comments. Um, so regarding uh, stray, elect, uh, stray voltage and potential for radio interference and such the like, um, any buried wire, if not installed properly or not, um, uh, if the correct equipment isn't, isn't installed, could cause these types of problems. However, uh, all of the equipment is regulated, is built to engineering standards. There are inspections upon installation. Again, we're reputable companies, reputable products, and uh, that stray, stray voltage should not be a concern. Um, any digital electronic equipment is capable of, if not functioning properly, capable of producing some radio interference. Again, there are standards which mitigate those potential effects when the, on the product side, um, reputable products, it, reputable installers, construction inspections. It's also something that can be monitored if ever someone were to suspect that uh, a, a product were causing radio interference. 
Solar panels themselves do not have uh, hazardous materials or radioactive materials that would leach into the soils. Uh, the manufacture of them does involve hazardous chemicals, but not the panels themselves. They're largely silicon based. Um, and I just recall that, and just to remember that, you know, solar panels are put on top of airports. They are, they are built to absorb light and the tracking panels actually, since they follow the sun, that's the direction that they mainly reflect back in. So okay, we're, the, we're way over. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your comments. Okay, are there any anyone else that would like to speak to PC02-19? Good morning. I am Erin Genzel. I am married to Mike. Morning, I just Mike. want to comment on the fact that when this proposal was originally brought up, awards and reputation aside, the fact that it seemed as though nobody came out there stood on County Road 27, which has already been beaten down by so much unnecessary traffic, given our location, that they didn't stand there and look around and see this enormous, which it's not on this, but it, there's an enormous one to the west of 27, to look around and see just how much having another one on the east would affect, whether it's the view from Jack and Lyle and Lisa's, um, yards because at the last meeting and I wasn't able to, pr to uh, show for the previous meetings due to commitments but it was commented that it was always about how not in my backyard it's in their backyard and now it's gonna be in their front yard and it feels as though nobody came out and took a look at that to see what it was gonna look like and that doesn't seem fair to residents who have been living there for 40 years. And that just, that is not fair for representation that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to PC02-19? Can I have just 30 seconds? 30 seconds. Okay. Mike Gensel, 60374, 224th Lane, Mass Link. Uh, some of the questions that were brought up on that prep, uh, the previous meeting here have not been addressed. The cost of the decommission, um, the, you know, it, who's going to, there should even be a bond in there as far as keeping up the screening. Because it, as soon as Fast Sun or Park, whatever they call themselves today, um, gets their money, they're out of here. Koppelman, hate to say it, he's an old dude. He's going to die pretty quick. You know, who's going to be there to, who, who's the one? Does, does it fall to his kids? So, I mean, there should be some sort of a bond to, to keep us protected from the street dying or whatnot. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? Hello, I'm Mark Chambers. I'm actually construction manager with REC Solar. I was asked to come out here and just speak for a few minutes. So your concerns about the landscape that you were talking about, we do have Minnesota Native Landscapes. They're very reputable contractor that do landscaping all through the state of Minnesota. They do have a vegetation plan. They are arborist. They will be out there to do the trimming of the trees to maintain them so they look clean, they look nice, presentable. I've done solar now for probably about 12 years. I have over a gigawatt worth of solar experience installations, sometimes working in smaller communities such as yourselves, and we do the best that we can. <clears throat> I understand your concerns. I can appreciate that. I did see that photo of the glare. Was that a fixed till or was that a tractor, sir? Fixed. It's a fixed till. Okay. So that's, we're talking about a tracker here. Right. The tracker is going well, to turn forward to the It's going to turn west to east, yes. And I don't have the full details. As a matter of fact, I was going to go out there today. You expressing there's a portage out, out there. I'm going to look into that because it shouldn't be out there. Uh, <clears throat> we are a reputable uh, company. We do work with smaller industries. We've worked all over the U.S. We definitely want to work with the community. So please, we'll just if we can work together on this, have some resolutions. I'm a little bit late to the game, so I'm not sure of all the processes. But I do want to go ahead and just let everybody know that we're going to work very hard to make this right. That should have started two years yeah, ago. Just a minute. And I apologize, but I've only been out here for two months, so I'm about 22 months behind. Okay. So I just wanted to let you know that we are going to work very hard to make this right. Okay. 
Thank you very much for your comments. Can I have one more word? Quick? Pardon? One little second. Can one I minute. Well, if he's new to the program. Please address the board, oh, Daryl. <clears throat> Please address the board. Daryl Gensel. Uh, again, Eagle Lake there. Oh, no, uh, this fellow, I forget his name, is new. I've asked lots of times, why can't it, Mr. Koppelman wants to cash in on this thing, why can't this, he owns land directly to the north of the existing solar pro, uh, farm, garden, whatever. Why can't this one go to the north of that one where nobody would, ha it's on his property, and, uh, and uh, there was some reason, like, and I'm, I would just like that clarified, why can't that go where, where nobody would have serious objections? directly to the north behind it. If, if anybody's familiar with that area, it's behind the trees, it's rolling, nobody, nobody directly would look at it. I, I, instead of taking another chunk of prime farm ground across the road, I, I don't understand that. Thank you. Okay. Okay, please make it quick. We're way over on this. My name is John Benzie, and I'm the one that will be directly affected by those tilting panels. When they, when the sun starts to set, those panels are going to turn and look right smack at my face. So I just wanted them, you to understand that I'll be looking directly at them, and they'll be nice and glaring right at me. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for your comments. Can I have 20 seconds? You already had five and a half. <laughs> Lyle Grove straight again. I just wanted to mention these are the same people that a year ago when I talked to them on the phone said, and in their words, that I don't even deserve to live there. I should be in town because I'm not a farmer. I have a suburban house. These are the people we're dealing with. This is what they think of us. Okay. I'm sorry, can I just have a quick second? Yep. Uh, yeah, yep. yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I really don't like it when people point at me and say these people, I represent my company EOR, I do represent this client, but whatever was said to a neighbor through some other party, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm not responsible for that. Uh, but I do want to say that a lot of time and money has been invested into developing this site, including Excel Energy. There's, they have a lot of say in where these sites can be located because they have to be connected to the utility. So, with respect to you know the potential to put something on another at another location, we're very far down the road in this to even consider such a thing. Um, I do feel like even though the project has been transferred from one company to another, the conversation has been all of the conversations that have taken place over that time have been transmitted down the line. Okay. We are aware of those conversations. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. <coughs> everyone's had an opportunity to speak we'll close the public portion of the meeting bring it back to the board for action I'll move approval is there a second second any discussion I would like to just <coughs> touch on it <coughs> mr. chair <coughs> yes go ahead. I'd like to touch on just a couple of the things and uh, again I'm not an expert in this we all know it, but we've all worked very hard the landowners around the area have worked very hard uh, I do have a little bit of a problem not allowing someone else to do something because of bad of experience of someone else that did something. Um, we run into that at planning and zoning all the time when we try to approve something as small as a, a small repair shop out in the rural area and one of the planning commission's members might say, well, so-and-so down the road has a junkyard, we don't want that. You know, well, we can't let this guy not develop his property and do what he wants because of what somebody else is doing. So we have to give these people a fair shake at trying to make it right, it is very difficult because our past record, our past experience with these other two operators has not been good. Um, that's, ex that's acknowledged that. Um, I certainly appreciate, Mark was your name? Yes, sir. Mark, I cer certainly you appreciate you coming and testifying. Uh, I think that'll give us a little glimmer of hope if you come through with what you say. And if we could have your phone number, if you're going to be the project manager, I would certainly appreciate that. And I think a couple of people in the audience would certainly appreciate that and take their calls and, and deal with the, the problems that are on the ground so that we don't have to send the deputies and the sheriff's department out there to deal with this stuff. Um, we have talked about a lot of these items through planning and zoning, through the other two processes, and it has been very difficult. And nobody, um, you know, likes to have certain things. Some things just don't fit in an area maybe to, to the, what they think. So um, 
I think the staff has done a great job trying to work through this process. I, I know Aaron and Julie have spent a lot of time trying to get this, the plan put together and uh, there's been a great deal of, uh, of time by the commissioners and uh, if Colleen drove by, I think the rest of us were on the ground out there at one point or another. We've had several other extra meetings with this and some of these questions we just can't answer and even if we do give some people the answers, they don't want to hear it and it ain't the right answer. So there's just some of them we just can't work through at this point. Um, I, I am going to support this today. It does need to pass. We have to respect other people's use of their properties and we've been talking about bringing this ordinance back to the table, renegotiating it, but at the same time I need the input from the citizens in the audience now, not that it's going to help them, but it might help somebody in the future, but I don't want to give you a false hope that you come to the table and all these things you want, you know, setbacks, density are going to change because after it gets to our board, we get the input from both sides. Right now, we're getting the input from the people that don't want it and only one person that wants it. When we start talking about the whole policy, we're going to hear from both sides. Uh, we're going get, to get way in from Excel Energy. They're going to send some horsepower down here to deal with it and negotiate it. And, and so I, I, I do want to address this ordinance in the future, but I don't want to give everybody in the audience false hope that everything that you want or think is going to happen is going to happen because that's, a, that's a, a big group of people that will be making that decision. It will be very difficult. So again, I, I think we've done it, uh, the best we can at this point to answer all these questions. I know they might not all be answered. Uh, I apologize for that. Um, I hope Mark comes through with what he says and gets us a phone number and, I, and uh, we, we just, uh, hopefully this project will work out really well. And it's got, uh, is it 40 conditions in our last solar? 36. 36 and, I, and they're usually about 12 or 14 conditions. So we have really, um, demanded a lot from this operation or this solar field and, and it is going to be hard to make them deliver but we will do our best at that so yeah thank you Kip any other comments okay not all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed it's carried thank you everyone commissioners thank you five yes we have five minute five minute break <coughs> okay we are back in session Come on up, Phil. Good morning, Phil. Good morning, Good Phil. Everybody. Good nice morning, Phil. You. Good to see you. Yeah. I appreciate your time this morning. <coughs> I do have a few action items, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, and uh, then some discussion items as well. Uh, the first action item under public health is a contract we carry with the Department of Health for public health emergency preparedness, which we call FEP and uh, it is to increase and maintain operational readiness for uh, county emergencies um, <coughs> that might be included in this contract are medical countermeasures, surge management, surveillance and investigation, and also information management. So we're often in a, a support role if there is such a need um, with law enforcement and others. Uh, there was a 1% decrease in our funding for this fiscal year from $49,000 to $46,000, approximately $47,000. The term July 1st of 19 through June 30th of 2020. Second item is financial assistance and it is our fraud contract. I think the board is fairly aware of this contract. Um, it starts between Department of Human Services and Blue Earth County for the investigation activities. Uh, the agreement that we have is with our sheriff's office, which was somewhat unique in the state of Minnesota and has proven to be very effective. So we're very proud of this and appreciate the partnership that we have with the sheriff. Um, and and Ginger, Ginger Peterson is our, our person that's part of our staff as well as part of theirs. Um, primary purpose is to prevent, detect, eliminate public assistance fraud of all kinds. Um, it is a renewal grant and the grant amount is $55,000, which has been flat for a number of years. The term July 1st of 2019 through June 30th of 2021. I will just comment that Ginger has been so helpful to us because of her presence to have a law enforcement professional with us in our team 
her and Tim Windler up in child protection has been invaluable and so there's a lot of times we lean on their expertise based on what they know that we don't know and the different trainings that we have across different disciplines. So we appreciate her very much. Thank you, sir. Can I no, just make ahead. a comment there? Um, I think it shows yet again how much uh, cooperation there is between agencies in Lourdes County. Um, working together and trying to figure out how to do it in the best possible way. So um, too frequently we don't hear about that cross-pollination, for lack of a better term, and there's a lot of it going on, and I just want to congratulate yeah. all of our staff that really work together. Yep. And it's important. Yep. Thank you, Commissioner. And, and Mr. Chair, uh, I, I do feel that so deeply, and it, it's that community piece. I mean, what we just heard, there's conflict that's part of a community, there's this working together, but it is about relationships and about people, and, and it comes shining through. And, and people, you know, when they start to copy what we're doing, which has happened in, in some of these areas as well, it's, it's the best form of a compliment, I think, for our community, but it, it's a collaborative. I mean, none of us can really own it or claim it. Uh, it reflects on this board and all the way down to our line staff. So appreciate those comments very much. Uh, the last action item, substance use, diso substance use disorder programming. This was more of a timing issue um, to the chair that we needed a signature on this form. It's a new form, um, but I thought I'd just bring it in and just discuss that what's happening there is, I, I have mentioned previously, kind of a reform going on in substance use. That's the new term, SUD, so substance use disorder. You'll hear that. It's the chemical dependency remodeling that's going on. This is one of the outcroppings of that. Um, this form really just allows us to provide care coordination and really what that means is that we can get paid for it. In the past it's been um, possible to find ways to get paid for some of our case management and chemical dependency but it hasn't been mainstreamed like it is in other social services so that's part of the new part and so we need our staff to be certified and this is really a form that will have um, the board chairperson sign um, just to allow us to do that work and get paid for it so that'll be part of the package. There's no financial implications on that and no expiration um, uh, on that on that form that we're going to put in our packet for um, the chairman. That's all I have, Mr. Chair. Okay, I'll what? move all of them. Second, do that. Any discussion? I just had another quick question. Uh, Go ahead. I think they're wrong. Um, on the fraud contract, uh, do you kind of a I don't know, running total like lately? I haven't heard figures. Yeah, it is one of the things I, I bring, and I can give you an update, Commissioner, maybe just send it through email if you'd like. Um, it is one of the things we bring annually, but we can do that more often, so I appreciate the request. Uh, that's probably it. If it's an I forget all. Well, no, that, so do I. <laughs> but, um, but it's easy for us to do, and if you're interested, I mean, in some of these areas, I think that's one that's very measurable, and we have that return on investment kind of figure at a dollar yeah. level, and so I, I can send that out just as a refresher and, and if we do it more than once a year, any of those items that you guys would like to see more than once, um, I'd be glad to get that to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Sure. Appreciate it. You Thank bet. you. Great. Mr. Oh. Chair? Yes. Just it's probably more of a comment. Um, in the public health emergency preparedness, um, it went down 1%, but my mm -hmm. assumption is that um, none of the things that we have to do have changed. Correct. Yeah, and, and I know Commissioner Landkammer knows this more than most, um, that we're struggling, and, and the board's very aware of our tuberculosis issue this past year has been a real problem, and it is something that we need to talk to Bob about, just about our budget, because we're left with just what the commissioner is describing as a whole, where our need is, is you know, immense. It was probably a person and a half, and we have a tenth of a person budgeted for, for that type of work. And so we were we were crushed by that reality, and, and so how to try to deal with these budget realities when it is a shortfall, growing need, more sophistication of the services we provide to the community, less money. Yeah. We've all been aware of those kinds of issues. Yeah. So, thank you. Okay. Any other thoughts? There nothing else. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. They are approved. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Commissioners. Um, also, just some information on discussion items. Uh, I w <coughs> want to make sure I don't forget to get you that additional information on fraud. Um, the first one is children's mental health and in your packet um, there is a kind of longer narrative but as Julie Stevemer is the name of our newer um, supervisor in this area and she wrote this up and I thought it was really good um, obviously I know the board's able to read and look at this but just to highlight this this feeling of what we do in children's 
um, mental health for case management. You'll see in that first paragraph kind of in the middle, the role is to assess and plan, refer and link um, these kids with high needs for emotional disturbance and their families. It's really important that we realize that we do this in the context of family. And then this list needs to meet at least one of the following. So have they been in a residential facility is the first bullet. Um, are they, oh, I'm sorry, are they at risk of being um, admitted to a facility? The second bullet is they're currently receiving inpatient treatment. The third bullet, um, have they been referred based on a seriously emotional disturbance diagnosis? And do they have risk of harm to self or others? Or do they have trauma in the past year? And then the final bullet, um, because of emotional disturbance, um, they demonstrate a significant impairment at home, school, or community um, at least for a year. So you'll, you'll just get a sense of some of what the criteria, a lot of times we get calls or you get calls and people will question, you know, why did, I, did my child get case management or why didn't they is more often the question. Mm -hmm. And they might not meet this criteria. So a mental health professional, somebody that is licensed needs to make that determination and hit one of those points. But it's pretty specific if you, you know, look at that time frame too. There's a lot of kids that have um, struggles. Uh, but for a whole year is really the criteria, the bar we have to get over that's been going on for quite some time. And so that's what's being assessed during their diagnostic assessment. Um, the function, the last bullet too, just to highlight that a little bit, this, func this idea of functional impairment. One thing that really helps um, when we look at our own families and, and people we know is just what kind of impact does the presenting problem have on day-to-day -day functioning. So if you can get to school, if you can, you know, have food on the table, maybe not a family dinner, a perfect picture, but if all those things happen, it's a really good sign that functions at an okay level. When that starts to not happen and kids start to fail out of school, I always thought grades back when I was doing clinical work, grades were a huge indicator because their grades start tanking. I'm telling you, there's probably five other areas in their life that are also that messed works. up. And vice versa, if their grades pop back, it's almost always true that things are going better in, in all of those other domains. So it's a very interesting piece to look at, but it's a, a really good tell. And, and uh, you know, certainly you can apply that to a lot of life circumstances is how is this current pattern impacting your life? And when you see a deterioration, that's when the yellow flags and red flags start to pop up. And then vice versa, when things start to get better, you can really see this kind of overall tide rising. So just wanted to share some of that perspective as we talk about um, case level stuff in the shop. Here, I think it's more that, what are we looking for and, and what is this the nature of this work? We have six FTEs in that following paragraph, about 160 active cases. This is an area, and the board was, and Bob was very good to us last year, gave us an extra staff, but I will say we're almost double the statutory limit in this area. It's, it's the, probably the highest area where we're struggling still. Um, the supervisor, I'm doing my budget meeting with Bob here publicly, but uh, the supervisor is saying we need to let this caseload fill up before we ask for another staff, but I, I am saying this is an area where we have high need and we're way understaffed. And so I think not this year, but you might hear me talk about this problem next year again. Um, and then you'll see included in this caseload is some of our chemical health work. Michael Kirkwood is the staff that specializes in that area and has additional 11 adolescents that are that are working there. The next page I'm not going to spend much time on, but you'll see the graphics and some of the, the data trends, um, which are high and stable is how I describe this in general. Um, the first line shows our overall caseload, and the very last line I also wanted to highlight in that um, our out-of-home placements, which we talk about periodically, and I'm sure that'll be another topic that I go over with you in some detail. Um, is a huge area of expense. I mean, right around, it used to be a million and a half dollars a year, and now it's more like two million dollars a year. It's gone up with the child protection changes. Um, but in, in light of that, you'll see that 98% of the kids we work with are not in placement. So it's an impressive statistic. We're, we very much care about that. We want to do community-based care. We want to keep people with their families, some of the kids, and we want them to be in the community, not placed outside the home whenever possible. So statistically, it's, it's a good thing, but I can tell you our out-of-home placement costs are still sky high right now. Yeah. So. Um, shifting gears, um, Mr. Chair, I don't know if we want to pause there. If there's any questions on children's mental health, you want me to keep rolling? Any questions for Phil? 
No? Okay, <coughs> I'll keep rolling. Um, adult mental health, next graphics, these are pretty self-explanatory. And so again, this is case management, much like what we just went over, but for the adults that have serious and persistent <coughs> mental illness. And it is an area of our specialty. Our psychiatric clinic is really specializes in this area as well. So we are at that high end. We have a lot of community providers that are very good at dealing with kind of more of the um, serious mental illness that comes for us, but that serious and persistent mental illness, SPMI, you'll refer, hear it referred to, is the more um, severe and more acute cases that um, we, we deal with as our specialty area. You'll see the first graphic, um, just the five-year analysis of <coughs> overall um, new referrals. Um, and then you'll see the numbers of cases closed, which um, the referrals went down slightly, but the closing has um, gone up. And so there's this churn of caseload, if you can understand that. And the final slide kind of looks at the net results. Still, overall, we serve more people, um, depending on when people come off and when people come on. But 458 um, cases um, served in 2018. The next graphic is our clubhouse. I know some of the commissioners, if, if not all of you, were over at our 30th anniversary, 30th anniversary of the Second Step Clubhouse. Very proud of our club, and um, it's the consumer run part, which is what we're gonna look at here, is, is really the, the heart and soul of what we're doing at the clubhouse. Um, you'll see the first one is participation by month, and what this is is the work unit participation is how many people actually volunteered their time to help run the club. So that's how many bodies. And so in this case, um, you know, you'll see it kind of up and down different months. But um, a, a number of folks very invested in the running of the clubhouse. The second graphic is how many hours they, they volunteered their time to keep the clubhouse up and running. And, um, and then how many hours the clubhouse it was open because of that effort. And so you'll see the um, the piece of that, I, I'm sorry, that's the second graphic. And then the final one is the numbers of attendance by <coughs> month. So that's the unduplicated number of how many people um, show up in the club and use that. So it was really some, when I was over there, there weren't many staff, it was mostly members. And it really felt like you yeah. were at this, yeah. <laughs> this you know, family meeting and I was an outsider. And that's what I said. I said, this is your clubhouse, not ours. And it, <coughs> it's awesome. So, it was. It was. I. I was over there. I heard the that. Yeah. And it was a, a great, great meeting, and you know, it's always enjoyable to see uh, the the members there and and how proud they are of their place. Very because much. They so. really are. They're proud of that clubhouse and proud of what what they've done. So that was uh, a good thing. Yeah. So, thank you for your yeah. support of the years. It's really important. So I was there too. Yeah. Thank you. It's always fun to be there. It means a lot. I, I went there and they're very proud that you guys show up over the years and, and they usually have an open house of some type every year, but this was kind of yeah. a special one. So. Um, very other end of the spectrum then. So <coughs> Clubhouse is really saying this is your thing. This is, this is the freedoms that we do to um, invest our time in our community and the Clubhouse <coughs> is certainly a big part of that. Here's when people are really struggling in the commitment data. So when people aren't able to care for themselves and they need um, you know, some authority to step in and make sure that their their daily needs are being addressed. Mm -hmm. And so the court, obviously, uh, Pat, Mike's here today, um, work with us on these commitments. How this starts is we have what we call a pre-commitment pre screening. And so when somebody looks like they may be eligible, we do kind of a complete um, holistic view of uh, is there enough going on to really say that somebody has to step in and care for this individual without their consent. So it's, it's a high bar. There's no doubt about that, both for the courts and for us. But we work through that. You'll see 50 people in this first slide came through, which was slightly down. I don't know that there's really rhyme or reason to that, uh, you know, when uh, in a given 12-month period of time, um, how many people might, you know, be at risk at that level. So it does ebb and flow some. But um, if we're trending down, I think that could be a good thing. <coughs> Um, you know, we do, it's like child protection too, and adult protection, you, the public gets educated on what the level of need is, and so sometimes there's a natural filtering of, of where people can get support. There's no doubt when somebody needs a pre-partition screening that they need help. It's just what level of help. Do they really need to be committed, or is there something else we can offer them? The second graphic um, is the pie chart. 
and it's just um, the difference between the different um, outcomes from the screening, so still at the screening level, um, stay of commitment that we agree that we will intervene without a court involvement, but if that action doesn't happen that we will bring it back to court. Um, you'll see a number 10 individuals were out of the 50 were screened out um, altogether and didn't meet criteria for co commitment. And, and that does not mean they didn't receive any service, but just that they, they weren't going to go down that road. And then 19, almost 20 of the 50 um, full commitment and brought through court for that process. Um, the final slide is the orders by type. And you'll see that um, the MI and CD um, combination, so both a, a serious mental illness and chemical health being combined, um, co-occurring, um, the strictly um, mental illness um, was the most prevalent. And then mentally ill and dangerous is a smaller number, but that's when the actions um, create risk for other people. And right. so we do have to step in, and that's the most serious of, of the different categories. So um, and then the final area of discussion is um, just some statistics about our mental health center. So, you know, we refer to this as the hub, which is really a psychiatric component. component. We do have some therapists that work in our clinic, and so these, this is some of the combined data. You'll see an overall kind of flat picture of admissions. Um, this is month by month, so, you know, the holidays, usually there's that dip down, and that's true year over year. Um, the green line is the total of the combination of therapy and psychiatric um, help. In that first slide, there's 42 admissions per month, so, so we're hopping. I mean, that's still pretty, for a very small yeah. clinic, that's a lot of new people coming through. And then scheduled appointments, just a different look. We have almost 10,000 appointments that were scheduled in a year. Um, this was a decrease, and that was because we were um, one therapist short in this data set. So that was about the clinical time that we were offering as well. And then we've always been pretty proud of our no-show rate. It's a hard population to get in and the weather um, does affect this greatly. But we did cross over for the first time you see in December where we were um, uh, above or kind of right at average, which again, all things considered isn't bad, but we've been pretty proud of being uh, uh, better than average. So uh, we're not interested in being average yeah. at all, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So that's what I have for you today. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Any questions for Phil? Just a question. <coughs> Civil commitment, do they usually go to St. Peter? Yeah, it really depends. And um, there's some creative options now that we have where you can use um, different um, facilities. So it's not that they have to go to St. Peter. Okay. I would say yes to your question. The okay. simple answer is yes. Um, but that's not always the case. And sometimes the crisis center or other options can be used depending on what their situation is. So that's what we present to the court with the county attorney and mm -hmm. try to do the least restrictive options right. if possible. But right. often they do end up at the state hospital. Okay. Thanks. And Anoka, um, another. Okay. So, yep. very awesome. Okay. Anything else for Phil? Mm -hmm. Good. I don't have any form. Great. Great. Thank, Thank you very Phil. much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank, you, Phil. you. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Phil. Continue on with administrative services. Uh, first up, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, is the county board minutes for May 7th. Move to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Bills are, are the board minutes are approved. The next would be the bills for the two weeks indicated. I move approval of the bills. Second. Any discussion? Uh, second week, Mathewitz for 293000 I imagine that's County Road 1. That's correct. It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just uh, that's good. know when, you, that's when good. you bring up, a, you know, almost 300 thousand dollars figured catches your attention does it <laughs> good one to bring up mr. chair yes. and my the sad thing about that is that we're not done oh, yeah <laughs> well no not by a long it's shot a multi-million dollar program there but you know it's it's one of those things is that 
I think the public needs to understand that how much money does go into something like that. I can I can see uh, as I go by every day that they're there. Oh, <laughs> I, I turn the corner and go left I've every day, had, and I've I see many, part of it. I've had many people say that how hard that project must be because of being on the hillside and being. Yeah, and the, uh, how, yep. how much technology needs to go into something like that is just mm -hmm. amazing. So I uh, uh, can't wait for it to get done with, but uh, it's, a, it's exciting to see how they build it. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. gone by there a few times and <coughs> drove up and talked to them, and it's uh, amazing to watch uh, how they put something like that together. Mr. Not just a regular road. No. Mr. Chair, and, and it is going to be something that will be duplicated across this nation because it's so unique, sure. the way yeah. they're dealing with it. Oh, good. Any other comments? Not all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Bills are approved. Mr. Chair and Commissioners, item number seven in your packet is the Human Resources Department agenda. We just have informational items for the board today. We did have a resignation of a child protection worker, and so we've initiated recruitment to fill that position. We also had um, a couple of resignations in our uh, jail and the custody officer position, so we've initiated um, recruitment to refill those positions. Uh, we also have re uh, initiated recruitment to fill an investigator position. This is a result of a request from a current investigator to take a voluntary de demotion back to patrol, and so we'll be recruiting internally to fill that investigator role. Uh, then we did fill a position in our public health department as well as um, fill the position in taxpayer services. We did uh, have a promotion in our jail um, of a correction sergeant to uh, the jail administrator, so it's good to get uh, somebody back into that position. And so we'll begin recruitment to fill that sergeant position. Uh, then we had two other promotions, one in the taxpayer services area of a taxation coordinator position, as well as um, a taxpayer services specialist uh, working in our services and programs coordinator uh, role. So we've initiated recruitment to fill a license center specialist as a result of some of those changes. So lots of HR related activities still occurring here within the county. Yeah, good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair and Commissioners, then item number eight in the packet is the financial status report uh, for April 30th. This is a third of the way through our fiscal year. You'll see that our <coughs> revenues are at uh, a total of about $15 million, where expenditures are over $27 million. So this is kind of getting to that low point in our year in terms of uh, needing cash reserves to um, get us through to the point that those uh, local property tax levy dollars start arriving in May and so um, we do um, see quite a bit of a deficit at this point in the year. Um, the revenues are only at 12.9 percent of our um, budget so they are uh, quite low. Um, a little bit of concern as I look at this that the state and federal numbers are a little bit lower than they should mm -hmm. be at this point in the year. Some of that is the quarterly reporting within the Human Services Department so I anticipate that that will catch up. Uh, and then we also have some of our uh, state uh, local government aid dollars that only come in twice a year. So by July, we'll start to see those numbers recover a little bit. On the expenditure side, um, the total expenditures are 22.6% of our budget at this point. Um, what's really holding that down is the um, public works work. You know, we have a lot of uh, money that gets uh, budgeted for those road projects, and so that's now kicking off, so that'll catch up pretty quick here as the construction season um, continues. Um, obviously with the building project, our building and equipment line is a little higher than it has been in other years at this time and so um, we'll continue to see that throughout the year as that project uh, continues to move forward. On the enterprise fund, the, the landfill, you'll see that uh, there the expenditures do exceed revenue by about $150,000. Um, again. 
We have um, a large piece of equipment that was purchased, so that machinery and equipment line shows on almost half million dollar purchase there. So that explains a lot of that differential. The second page gets into our uh, cash reserves. Then you'll see that um, our total county funds are about 107 million. Um, that's um, most of it is uh, committed to other kind of dedicated sorts of funds. Our um, operating funds are down in that $47 million range where, again, if we look at what the state auditor has recommended, we should be in the around the 50 to $55 million range. But uh, stand, we're still in uh, good shape. I certainly don't want to portray it as anything but that. But uh, you know, um, we continue to kind of meet the needs of our community. Be happy to answer any questions that the board might have. Mm -hmm. Good. Any questions for Bob? Just, Mr. Chair, just a comment. This is really put together understandably, and I really mm -hmm. appreciate that. Yeah. Um, you do a nice job of just laying it out, and anybody could understand it. Well, I'd like to take that, but it's really the finance department that does all that work. You and Lisa. So I appreciate the work that they did and take kind of revamping take it this. Can, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions for Bob? Okay. If there are no other questions, we'll move on to reports on committees. Who would like to start? Mine's relatively short. I can okay. start, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Um, after the last work session, or after the last meeting, we had a work session, and was that the same afternoon we went to the open house? Yep. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. For the crisis center up there. And yep. What a very nice program up there. Mm -hmm. Neat place. Yep. Um, I was impressed with the open space that they have. You know, you have a space for the room for the person that's in there is kind of small, but with the open space, mm -hmm. uh, I thought it was just a very well laid out and a nice program, and I think it'll be a good asset to this region. Will and I have been doing some negotiating with County District 28 with the bond settlement. So we were at a meeting with the attorney last, or that, that Wednesday, then that Friday we were up in St. Paul at federal court. We were not able to get together and make a deal, so we'll be moving forward with that. I went to the open house up at the Pillars, another community Ooh. area that will be having some residential for elderly assisted living and memory care up yeah. at that unit. Uh, very nice operation. Uh, we went through and looked at, well, was Commissioner Strunberg and his wife and my wife were there and got a tour from Diane. And, uh, but very nice operation. Uh, it's going yeah. to be a, another good asset to this, this area. Then I had the East visits, went and talked to four senior classes, one right after another. Good for oh, you. Wow. God bless those teachers. I don't know how they can talk <laughs> for seven yeah. hours straight yeah. and get that done. Because I was there with Mike Labens, and him and I usually split the class. But by noon yesterday, I could hardly talk. <laughs> we, we present. We try to get questions out of the kids, but the questions are short, and then we talk some more. But Mike does a great job talking about the city portion, and then I talk about what I do as an elected official at the Blue Earth County level. And then last night I had my MVAC meeting and I managed to get reelected to be the president again for another two years. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and things are going very well up there. We're putting our strategic plan together. All the committee assignments got them put together yesterday. Now Amanda will put them together and have one big presentation for us. And then we have our annual meeting coming up in July. So things are going well there. That's my report, Mr. Chair. Okay, Colleen? Um, work session, crisis center, and I think the crisis center, it was so great to see it, but also to hear Phil talk about yeah. how that's another venue that we utilize, so really good stuff. Um, I went to the community stakeholder breakfast with Mayo. Mm. Um, it, was, it was fascinating, and um, the whole goal was to discuss key community health issues and how are, what are the community engagements that are going on? And there's a multitude of them. And you don't realize how many there are until you sit down with a group of people and it just kind of keeps going on and on and on. And um, it was just a great conversation to be able to talk about the importance of community engagement and partnerships and how do we work together. And Mayo is extremely interested in working with the community and trying to figure out how we all do better. Um, 
then um, we had, I had Futures on the 9th and the 10th mm -hmm. at AMC, and it was about immigration and the, the value that immigration brings to this state and the need for immigration in this state. But it started out with uh, an exhibit in the AMC parking lot um, for, uh, it was a mock teenager's room, and what were the warning signs of drug use and or misuse um, that you can see in a teenager's room. It was well done. Um, took up the first part of the parking lot. It was kind of like a trailer house. Um, but, you know, it's stuff you don't even think about, but um, it was really interesting to see. Um, so the immigration piece, across Minnesota, the first couple hours were on data. You know, what's the data out there? How does the data work? And what are they seeing? The next two hours, um, actually I think it was three hours and two hours, um, it was all about relationships. Um, and both of these presenters were from the University of Minnesota. You know, data is one thing, but what's a relationship? When is a community welcoming? When are they not? And as you look across the state, the, the distinct um, way things have flipped um, in as to um, people who are not considered white, um, it went from 69% white to 69% um, non-white. Mm -hmm. So um, in, in different communities, Worthington's a good example. You go downtown in Worthington and um, the whole downtown is um, businesses that um, are non-white. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it was a really interesting um, conversation and a conversation that talked about the value of immigration and how in this state if we don't have immigration um, our economic development is not going to continue. So fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the Friday after that it was all about um, workforce housing. Um, how do you, you know, how do you have make that happen because you know when you talk about affordable housing people think the perception is that they're not working they're usually working two or three jobs. Um, so the importance of that in your community and giving everybody a leg up. Um, so, and how do we end homelessness? Um, Marx was there who runs Catholic Charities and mm -hmm. talked about, and he also ran the Department of Commerce under Pawlenty. Mm -hmm. So um, it was an interesting um, conversation talking about faith, civic and public policy leaders, just the multitude of partners you need in order to make this stuff happen. And then um, Julie Ring, our executive director, was going to do an update on the legislature, but there was nothing to update um, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> um, and then last week I was at the National Association of Counties. Um, I had a board meeting. Um, and so lots of information, um, but the primary goals of NACO right now are member engagement. How do we engage our members? How do we share the information that other counties are, you know, innovative things that other counties are doing and how do we build that? Policy advancement, you know, um, there's uh, a new partnership with the sheriffs on jail inmate recidivism. Um, and and how you help with that through improved health care. Um, interesting, interesting conversation. Uh, Waters of the U.S., um, uh, refunding bonds, um, the National Flood Insurance Program, test it. I think you all have that on your phone, the test it app, and it will tell you when you hit it, if you don't have it, I'll give it to you, um, what your upload and download speeds are. And this is something that we want everybody to use because then it'll go to the federal government to show what speeds are, and it tells somehow in this phone how, um, where you are when you test it. So um, what's your upload, what's your download, and um, what are the needs across this nation? I think it's a really cool thing, and it's really easy. <laughs> you punch it once or twice. Um, so um, 
you know, county resolutions, that kind of thing, um, what's going on federally, um, the financial health of NACO, um, and the partnerships we have in order to ensure financial health for our employees and um, organizations around um, this nation. And, and how do we engage our talent? How do we help people um, move up in an agency and what types of trainings and operational efficiencies are able to be done. So that was my week. And um, yesterday I met with a couple gentlemen um, about um, recreation in the county and where the county is on that. And that's my report. Great. Thank you. Thank you, you Queen. Thank Bales. you. <coughs> Great. Well, uh, uh, we talked about the work session already, our last board meeting and the crisis in our open house. Uh, the next day, uh, Will and I had a community farm meeting right here. Um, so we're going to be having a different manager of our community farm. Hmm. Uh, but uh, the gal like, Will, you remember the, the gal's name? No. Uh, I don't have it right with me either. I've got it in my phone. But she was, yeah, she was uh, a, a big volunteer last year mm -hmm. and uh, going through MSU and uh, uh, she'll be a great asset for us to work through the year. Um, Can I make one comment? Sure. Anna's going to be sorely missed. No, uh, yeah, she's absolutely. done such a fabulous Anna, job. Anna's uh, been just an amazing asset where, for us yep. for Blue Earth County. Where did she, uh, I didn't realize she was... Uh, well, it looks like her husband's going to be taking a job out of state and oh. she's going to be following her husband. That's, that's okay. But I don't, I don't know if they have those, those yeah. particulars yet. Mm -hmm. Anyway, after that meeting, I had my corrections advisory meeting and we had uh, MSU officials discussing their new criminal justice program, which is basically a middle ground between law enforcement and corrections. Uh, because there's always that issue right in between that people, students don't know where they're going to be going, and so they're going to be putting in a criminal justice program just to kind of help those, those students out. <coughs> Um, I then had a Region 9 uh, Board of Directors meeting and we had speakers from the Minnesota Department of Ag uh, and then we had, a student, had the uh, Wasika mayor who spoke about their cannabis growing and they want to be the best cannabis growing city in the state of Minnesota. So that was kind of interesting. Uh, uh, Isn't it hemp though? Well, <laughs> hemp, it's, it's, hemp. It's, 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 it's marijuana. It's uh, you know, but it's it's for the CBD oil, you know, mm -hmm. the the legal uh, issues, and they're 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 um, they're very proud of the fact that uh, they they're using some of the brown printing operation to uh, to use some of the machinery to. Uh, extract the oil from mm -hmm. the marijuana and uh, it, it I'm very very happy for them. Uh, May 9th then I had I went to a Go Red luncheon for the American Heart Association um, and uh, that luncheon itself earned over forty thousand wow. dollars for the American wow. Heart Association. They had an open your heart thing where people just wrote checks and for mm -hmm. on that day or that lunch and that itself earned fourteen thousand five hundred dollars. Wow. So uh, that was <clears throat> great for the American Heart Association. It's always uh, you know that's big in me since uh, Mary had a heart attack five and a half years ago. It, it's always big for our family for the American Heart Association. Uh, that evening we had our mayors and clerks over in Lake Crystal. Uh, a, a beautiful, beautiful place to have it. I, I love going into the park there. Of course, back when I was a police officer, that was just a park area back then. Uh, but uh, they have a nice area to have a meeting. And uh, we had uh, Kelly McBride, our own Kelly McBride from the library. Um, it had some really interesting stuff. She showed some statistics from what the value of the services for Blue Earth County is. And I thought one of the very interesting, in, in 2018 alone, there was 214,832 books borrowed Ooh. from the Blue Earth County libraries. If you'd 
average the retail value of those books at $27 a book, that would be over a $5,800,000 value of services alone just through Blue Earth County. That's amazing. Yeah. That's just amazing. And, and of course, that's just one part of the whole. I think the total value uh, of everything that, that went through Blue Earth County Libraries was over $10 million for 2018. Wow. So I think we're getting a good, good value for our money there. We have some very amazing staff that work for us uh, across the county. Mm -hmm. uh, Lake Crystal, um, I would say Mapleton. Mapleton. Yeah. You know, we have some amazing people that work work across the county in, in our library services. Um, on May 10th, I had the Region 9 Transportation Advisory Committee. Um, we had we talked about MnDOT planning funds agreement. We talked about the transportation <coughs> planning grant agreement work plan, and then uh, we talked about um, using the build program, which is the old FAST Act, yep. and trying to put Highway 14 between. Uh, Nicollet and New Ulm and seeing if we could write a grant for <coughs> for that um, and assisting and in, in trying to get a, a federal grant to try to help that program along uh, since it doesn't seem like uh, the, the Minnesota state is helping that along this year <coughs> but I could be wrong and I'm always looking positive um, May 13th, I had my Transportation Alliance board meeting in St. Paul. May 14th, we had the Second Step program we already talked about. May 15th was the pillars that me and Kip went. Amazing building. I think we're very lucky to have that building. And I think that's in your uh, district. Yep. Um, uh, May 16th, I had the TDS board in New Ulm and that afternoon I went to the Sherry Allen retirement oh, good. here in Mankato. Uh, our superintendent of schools retired. Uh, she's done a wonderful job for us. And then on May 17th I stood around for two hours at the in the, Mad in the uh, on Madison Avenue at the McDonald's for the <coughs> TDS buckle up for a buck program. Handing people a dollar coming through the drive through that had their seat belts on, and uh, it was uh, it was very interesting seeing people coming up. Of course, we had vests on and stuff, so we so we're somewhat official. But people don't know if they want to roll down their windows or not, you know. And, but it was a good program, really showing people the need to uh, put that seat belt on, and and just for even. <coughs> a three block area because something could happen. Somebody might pull out in front of you and, and that seat belt can stop you from hitting that windshield. Even at 25 miles an hour you hit something solid, you're going to you're going to hit the windshield. And it's serious, serious stuff. Sir, but that's that's it. Did anybody not have their seat belt on? Yes. Really? Yes. We uh, there was and what we did is we gave them information and we Spoke to him, but they they all put their seatbelts on while we were talking to him. <laughs> um, well, how many? Uh, how, I didn't mean it. Yeah, was we had a few, how many? In, in fact, for us, and we had two two lanes coming through. We gave out a hundred and sixty dollars for buckle oh. up for a dove. So we had a hundred and sixty people, and of course, then we ran out of money, and and we ran it. We started. At 11, and we ran out of money at probably about 12:30. You know, I mean, so most people are really, really seatbelt conscious, and I, I, but, but they, a lot of times you, you, you talk to them, and they don't. The people in the back seat don't have their seatbelts on, and, and the serious accident we had over in Lake Crystal the, uh, last week, that shows if that seatbelt would on. Yeah. That it could have saved a life, mm -hmm. and that's and we really try to enforce that and try to say how serious it is if if something happens, you don't get thrown out of that vehicle. That's that's mine. Great, thank you, I'm Mark. Okay, mine's relatively short. We had a work session on the seventh, and uh, and of course the South Central Crisis Center, and it's always fun to go there. I met the director, the 
which kind of relatively new. Um, <clears throat> then uh, I did manage to make the conference call for Micah the next day on the 8th. And of course, kind of old news now, but that was when they're just getting into the <clears throat> or final of the days of the session. Um, I, had, I don't know, like I say, I didn't go to the uh, Senator Drumberger's the book signing, yep. <laughs> and they didn't bring enough books. That was a problem, but I met him that morning. Yeah, I know, and he <laughs> he didn't quite remember. But anyway, uh, um, and then on uh, May 10th, the uh, All Seasons Arena, we did have our board meeting, uh, working at trying to get a couple other members of the uh, to be on the operating board uh, for the Seasons Arena, and then I did make the clubhouse on the 14th. And uh, I was late for the pillars, but I didn't make that. But it was late. Went to see you guys here, but okay. Anyway, so uh, busy all the way around. Perfect. And that concludes my report, Mr. Chair. Great, thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Most of the stuff's been talked about. We had the work session, the uh, crisis center, the community farm, the county ditch, 28, uh, uh, mayors and clerks. Uh, uh, I was <clears throat> on the 9th. I was at the SWCD monthly meeting. Um, had a good meeting there, and uh, uh, of course on the 10th, Kip and I were up in the cities for the County Ditch 28 thing. Uh, on the 13th, I was at Detox in uh, New Ulm. Detox meeting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm the chairman the of the board, not a, not a resident. Not a resident. <laughs> Might want to clarify. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And um, we had a good good meeting. Unfortunately, um, uh, participants. Well, good and bad. Uh, participation was down um, in the first part of the year, so uh, revenue was down, but it's good that there are less people going to detox. So, um, 15th, I had the one one River Policy Committee uh, over in St. James. Um, unfortunately, we did not have a quorum. A lot of, farm, hmm. a lot of farmers on that board, so that completes my report. So, anything else for the good of the order? Mr. Hey, that's all we have for today. Great. I'll move to recess to Papa George's for lunch. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Amy and Mike, for being yes, here. Yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, in addition, we'll head to we'll tell you Papa guys. George's.